Hello and welcome to this video on C Sharp Delegates, Action and Funk. We'll start off by covering what a delegate is and why they exist in the C Sharp language. We'll follow a demo that demonstrates how to declare a delegate type and a delegate instance before creating a calculated demo that will use our delegate in a more real life example. We'll then talk about what an action is and refactor our delegate demo to use action. And finally, I'll explain what a funk is and again refactor our demo solution to use funk. A delegate is a type that defines a method signature. What this means is that instead of defining data and method implementations like we do with other types, a delegate just defines a method signature, i.e. the parameters and the return type for the particular method. A delegate can be seen as a pipeline to move from one point, point A, to point B. Point B would be the handler method that we would create. John Skeet mentions that to help understand delegates, it's important to distinguish between a delegate type and a delegate instance. A delegate type defines a method signature, just like an interface does. And a delegate instance is an instance created from the delegate type. You can declare a delegate type either on their own or within a class. Trying to understand delegates I think is a lot easier when we actually start doing it inside Visual Studio. So let's jump straight into a demo where I'll show you how to create a delegate type and then a delegate instance. But first, let's declare a delegate type. As mentioned above, a delegate type defines a method signature, just like an interface does. Okay, so let's first declare our delegate at the top of our class. So we're going to say public delegate, and we're going to give it the return type of string, say, and the name operation delegate. We're going to pass in two parameters, int x and int y, and that's how we declare a delegate. We can either declare a delegate in our class, or we can declare it on its own. So let me just copy and paste and show you what I mean by that. We can paste it outside the class, so we could have that in another separate class if we want, and we could call upon that when we needed. For now, we're going to use the delegate inside our class. So let me get rid of the delegate declaration on top here. Okay, so now let's create an instance of our delegate. So we're going to say operation delegate, and we're going to call it d1 equals new. So we're going to instantiate our delegate above new operation delegate. Anytime that we use the operation delegate, we're going to pass it off to a method called process request. We don't have process request at the moment, so it's going to be read. But let's create that now. I'm going to say private static string is the return type and process request. Takes two parameters, as you can see from our delegate above, int x and int y. And we're simply just going to return a string back here. So we're going to write out what is in int y and int x. So int x first and int y second. Just so we can see all the values that we'd be passing into this method. Okay, so let's have a look how we would invoke our delegate. We can say string response equals d1 and we're passing in two ints which we can say one and two. Let me just fix up the minus because that's meant to be equals. Okay and now we're going to do a console write line and we're going to pass in the response. We will just quickly say console read line so that we can stop our application, our console app and make sure that we can read it. So what this is going to do is it's going to call d1, it's going to pass in a 1 and a 2 as integers, and it's going to call off to the process request. Just to quickly note, string response equals d1 open and close parentheses is the shorthand way of calling our delegate. We can do this long way, such as string invoke request equals d1 dot invoke, and then we can pass in say 20 and 10. 
and we'll copy and paste that so we can write out the invoke request. And let's try and run that again. Cool, so you see that they both work the same way. It's just that D1 is a shorthand way instead of saying D1.invoke. To quickly recap, we've looked at how we can declare a delegate type. We can either set a return type, which we've done here, a string, or we can set it to void. We've then looked at how we can declare a delegate instance. We've assigned process request, which is our method that the delegate will call once it's been invoked, and then we've invoked our delegate. So we've said D1, and we've given it the two parameters that are needed, a one and a two. What's also important is that when you define a delegate, behind the scenes, the compiler is actually generating a class that inherits from multi-class delegate. Let's now jump into multi-class delegates. Let's quickly discuss what multi-class delegates are. All delegates are multi-class delegates. What this means is that we can assign one or more methods to a single delegate variable. When we invoke the delegate, all of the methods that we have assigned to a method list are run. We can add a method to a delegate list by using the plus equals operator. The multicast delegate is an extension of the normal delegate. It helps you to point more than one method at a single moment in time. Normally when using multicast delegates, it would have a void return type. Otherwise, if it wasn't void, the return value is unpredictable because the order of the delegate invocation is not guaranteed. Delegates can be good for event-driven programming. We don't need to know the class of the object in which it refers to. All it needs to know is the signature of the method to which to point to. We'll cover more about this in our demo. To save time, I've done a little bit of setup before we start this demo. At the top of the class, you'll notice that I've created a delegate, operation delegate. This is a return type of void and it takes no parameters. I've also created two methods, process1 and process2. These are the methods that we're going to call from our delegate. So let's start off by declaring our delegate, operation delegate, and create a local variable called D. And we're going to say null. Right, now we're going to say D plus equals process1. And that's going to call off to our process1 method. And then next we're going to say D again plus equals process2. We're going to invoke our delegate here. So we're going to say d.invoke. That's going to run the two methods. And we're going to say console read line. Let's run this application. And you'll see that we have both of our methods run. So this is a little look into multicast delegates. What we've done here is that we've assigned more than one method to a single delegate variable. Then we invoke the delegate and both of the methods were run. Okay, so now that we have a better idea on what a delegate type is and what a delegate instance is, now we're going to create a calculator app. This is going to hopefully help with the understanding on what a delegate is, how they are used, and what they're good for. So on screen at the moment, you'll see a couple of console write lines. First will be into first number, and then we're going to convert that to an int32 and second into second number, and third we're going to select an add, subtract, or multiply. At the top we have a public delegate and our delegate name is operation delegate. So here what we're going to do is we're going to declare our delegate, we're going to say operation delegate, and we're going to call it calculation, and set that to now. And now we're going to make a switch statement, and the switch statement is going to be is going to read what the operation is, either add, subtract, or multiply, and then do a certain task. So let's say switch operation. And our first case is going to be add. And that takes an int in the parameters and an int y. And what we're going to return is x plus y. Hey, 
helps if I spell things right. So we'll say calculation there and calculation there. And then we'll break that off. Okay, so what we've created here is a local function. We can simplify this by using lambda. So let's do that now. Okay, so we've been able to simplify our code by using Lambda. That's taken a lot of lines of code out and put it into one single line that makes it clear and hopefully easy to read. When our operation comes in, our parameters are going to be X and Y, and that's going to pass that into X plus Y. Okay, so let's pick our second case, which is going to be subtract. So we'll say case subtract. I'm going to say calculation, and again, using lambda, we're going to say x dash y, and x minus y, and we'll enter break. So you can start to see here that we're building up different actions that we might want to perform for a calculation. And so let's do a last one, multiply, I'll say calculation. And the same again. I'm going to say x times y. Now we've got our switch statement. We want to create a method to process this data. So let's say process data. And in our process data, we're going to pass in the first number in the parameters, second number and the calculation. And you'll see that the calculation is a delegate. So now we want to create a method that's going to handle our three parameters, including the final one, which is a delegate. So let's say public static void, we're going to call this method process data, and we're going to take in three parameters, an int x, int y, and our operation delegate. And we'll just call that del. So let's return a result and say del x dash y. Going to console right line that and write out the result. I'm also going to say console read line just so we can pause the application when we run. So what we're going to do here is we're going to Come down, we're going to enter the first number, second number, whether we want to add, subtract, or multiply. We're going to hit our switch statement. In our switch statement, obviously it's going to select whatever option that we've selected above in the operation. And then it's going to pass that method through into this process data method. So that's kind of the thing about delegate is that we can have one or more different methods and pass that through to another method to then action on it. So let's say that an add comes through, an add is going to be passed in to this parameter here, and it's going to action in this result. If we send a subtract, the subtract action is going to come through to the operation delegate parameter here, and it's going to be executed in here. Let's run that and see if that works. So in first number, let's keep it simple just so we can see things working. One and into second number two. We're going to add and we get three. Awesome. And let's try that one more time, but with something more difficult in another option. So 20, 30, and let's say um, multiply. And we get 600. An easy way to think about delegates is that we are passing around methods just like we would data. Normally we'll pass data around our application. For example, we store values or references as variables. Then we pass that to another method or class. The delegate allows us to pass a method around just like we would data. That's pretty cool. Now let's have a look at action and func. Action and func are delegates. They were introduced in C Sharp 3 to remove the amount of code needed to implement and use delegates. 
The difference between the two is that Funk has a return type and Action doesn't. Action returns the void. Remember, an easy way to think about Funks and Actions is that we are passing methods around just like we would data. Normally we pass data around our application, for example, we store values or references as variables. Then we pass that to another method or class. The Funk and Action Delegate allows us to pass a method around just like we would data. A word of caution here. I'd recommend that you be careful when implementing Action and Funk, as there are always other ways to implement what you are trying to do. While they can be very useful for deduplicating code, just be careful not to use it for using its sake when it doesn't make sense. Okay, so here we are back in our calculator application. Let's refactor this to use action. So first thing in our parameters is we're going to set this to action. And it will take in an int and an int. And remember that action doesn't have a return type, so we can't do var result. And we're going to put in this console write line, action has been processed so that we know that this method has been called. And because we don't have a return type on action, we're going to have to console write line up in the switch statement. Okay, so let's say console write line. And we're going to put our x plus y in here. Okay, so let me just copy and paste these down here. It's going to be times. And now we're going to change our operation delegate to action. Int, int. And we don't need our operation delegate that we've declared up here. So as you can see, there's a little bit less code needed in order to implement an action over a delegate. Sometimes it might be clearer to declare a delegate instead of an action, just so that you can understand what's going on. Let's run this and make sure it still works. So first number one, second number, and we're going to say add, and we can see that action has been processed, so we know that it's gone into that method, and that we returned a three. And finally, let's refactor our application to use func. Remember, func has a return type. So let's jump straight down into our process data method and change this to func. And we'll say int int. Now we're going to add another int here. This is going to be the return type. The last one in the series here is always the return type. As you can see, system.func, we have an out t result at the very end. So let's change that to func. And now we can say var result again and get a result from our func. So we can return that back into the console write line here. And the good news is we can now remove all of the console write line code that we just added before, which is most likely the better one to use here. Let's change that to func. Remember, we need to add one more int because that's going to be the return type. And that should be it. So let's try and run that. Enter first number one, second number, add three. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please remember to hit like and subscribe to my YouTube channel to keep up with all my latest YouTube tutorials.